Hello, McFluffy52 here, back with some more Phyrexia All Will Be One action, and today we're playing a Slesnia plus one plus one, or like counters deck, uh, with some new additions from Phyrexia All Will Be One. So the idea is basically every single creature we have can introduce plus one counters, or has something to do with like counters or plus one counters. Some of the important additions though from Phyrexia All Will Be One are evolving adaptive. When it enters the battlefield, it enters with an oil counter, uh, and then it gets plus one plus one for each oil counter that it has on it. But most importantly, if we play a bigger creature that has greater power or toughness, uh, it grows too. So if it has greater power, it will increase or add another oil counter. If it has greater toughness, it will add another oil counter. And then we can proliferate these oil counters using other cards like Thirsting Roots to make Evolving Adaptive even bigger. Now, if oil or if Evolving Adaptive both has a plus one counter and an oil counter, we get to proliferate both of those counters. So it gains like two power for off of one proliferate. And then another proliferate source we have is Bloated Contaminator. This is a real nice card to have in this kind of counter deck or whenever it deals combat damage to an opposing player, you get to proliferate. Uh, and then we can try and put counters on this with Simeon Simulacrum or Siege Veteran. And then we also have Canker Bloom here. This is just a nice body that can grow Evolving Adaptive. This is also for Phyrexia All Will Be One. And then in a pinch, we can use it to sacrifice it and proliferate or destroy target artifact or enchantment. And then uh, in terms of other really big cards, we have Clay Champion. This is part of the reason why we're in Slesnia, besides the Intrepid Adversary and Siege Veteran, is uh, for every double white spent to cast this, we get to put a plus one counter on two other creatures, uh, which makes this Clay Champion a really nice curve topper because we can spread out a bunch of plus one counters or we can pay double green to put three plus one counters uh, onto the Clay Champion itself. So let's go ahead and hop into some games and see how we can do on the Mythic Ranked Ladder. This is very much kind of like a beatdown deck and I was playing it in standard games. We we're doing all right. Um, I think we'll struggle a lot more against ranked opponents that are playing a lot more removal because uh, I think that we're going we're gonna to face a bunch more like mono black types or like mono red types that like, remove our first like two or three creatures and we might struggle in some cases. This curve though is looking really good because we've got the evolving adaptive into the query on B's color on two and then into the bloated contaminator and then potentially into a clay champion. So do a backup bloated contaminator. That's nice. So like I was talking about, it looks like we're mono black. Yep. <clears throat> so I don't know how we're going to do here if they have like Three plus removal spells. Gonna get pretty hard to uh, do all right here, but we do have this clay champion, which is nice, and we do have enough mana to cast it. <clears throat> no blocks. Our clear and beast caller can uh, get larger as we cast creature spells. When we cast a creature spell, put a plus one counter on it. When it dies, drifts you X counters among any number of target creatures you control. Oh, I almost forgot to mention, yeah, there'll be a full deck tech at the end of the video, so stick around if you're interested in that, and if you enjoy Magic the Gathering Arena videos, consider subscribing, uh, because, well, we put out as many as we can. Alright, uh, the auto-tapper has proven not to be my friend here sometimes, so we're just going to go ahead and physically tap this one out. Pay zero, confirm zero. We're casting a creature soil, so that gets a plus one, plus one. Mm-hmm. And then we spent two green, so it comes in with three plus one counters, and then we spent two white. It will always ask you creatures for like the the white side of this card, but or the, the double white, even if you didn't spend any white mana, that is something important to know with a clay champion. But when this load contaminator connects, everything gets to grow, which is the real satisfying part about this deck. Spent four, boom. <laughs> Now we have three six sixes. If they don't remove one of them, they're dead. If they don't come with a blocker, they're also dead. Uh, so yeah, invoke despair. We'll sacrifice a Korean beast caller, and they are dead. <laughs> well, our opponent had one removal spell into an invoke despair, so not quite good enough. That is that is the ideal beatdown. Uh, like curve out we really need to curve out cleanly here and hope the opponent doesn't have any sweepers if the opponent has a sweeper we don't have much card draw um, 
We can try and play around the sweeper by not playing out our entire hand. Uh, but at the same time, where one sweeper is, there might be another sweeper. I know. It's very hard at that point. Uh, this is a decent hand. We have the Iron Apprentice on one. This card is really nice because it enters with a plus one counter. Uh, so we can proliferate that. And then when it dies, you can put the counters that it had on it to another target creature you control. We got the brush land here for dual lands for when we need it. It's important though when you're playing those clay champions that you tap your brush land for actual colored mana. I don't know if the auto tapper actually works in that case. Oh no. Are they playing Orzoth enchantments? Because if that's the case, I'm a little I'm a little worried. Uh ooh, we don't have enough colored mana to go through with this. So I think we'll just play out the Creon Beast Color. Or we could just Thirsting the Roots, and that's the only thing. We'll go ahead and play this out. Uh, do we want to test if they're willing to trade creatures? No. I don't think it's worth. Hopefully we top deck a land here. If we don't, we can Thirsting Roots for a basic land, but we're at that point we're super behind. They kill... Oh, no. Not right to Oblivion, that... Alright, that's a pretty good top deck here. We'll take that. Um, Simeon Simulacrum. I like this card quite a bit. Siege Veteran is nice, but I, I love Simeon Simulacrum. Uh, because you get to put two plus one counters on a target creature you control when it enters the battlefield. Uh, which means that you can give it to something that can actually swing in. Um, and then when it dies, you can unearth it for four mana um, from your graveyard. Though if they, they use that Exile again... They exile it again. I'm going to lose my mind. I right, will go ahead and play Siege Veteran. We also have Siege Veteran in this deck, which is similar to Simeon Simulacrum. It can help spread plus one counters around at the beginning of combat. Sacrifice a non token creature. Uh, yeah, the Simeon Simulacrum we want going to the graveyard. Go ahead and put this on the Iron Apprentice. Now they might go ahead and exile this Iron Apprentice. In that case, we're very sad. Endless exile removal. Ay, ay, ay. Alright, we can play... Pay two green, two white into the play champion. But I don't think we really want to do that here in this case. We'll go ahead and do this. Play out the Evolving Adaptive. Play out the Simeon Simulacrum. This will trigger the Evolving Adaptive to make it bigger. And then we can also grow the uh, Siege Veteran if we want. Everybody has a counter now. And everybody's about equally as large. I want to try and spread out the love in these sorts of situations if you can. Because that means that you're... Uh, no, if you uh, spread out the love. Particularly like with Siege Veteran, this is very sim similar to a card that used to be in Standard. Um, which was two mana at the beginning of your combat, put a plus one counter on target creature you control. Um, but uh, you want to generally not put the plus one counters on this if it's going to keep out putting out plus one counters. That way the opponent has to either kill the thing that's putting plus one counters on it or kill the big thing that you made out of it. They have to make a kind of bad choice. A lose-lose scenario, if you will. Um... All right, we could rush out a Simeon Simulacrum here, or we could put this down and then proliferate, which seems kind of fun. We'll go ahead and do that. Unfortunately, our opponent probably has a kill spell. Yeah, Edict. Uh, well, Edict or Simeon Simulacrum, because so I can also come out of the graveyard. Go ahead and put the plus one counter on this. And then, ooh, we could do this at our second main. It does stop us from potentially getting more damage in though. But it stops Simeon Simulacrum from being as big. I think they might just chump block here. So we're gonna go ahead and not bother with the proliferate until after the attack. Yeah, we're gonna just chump. We didn't really have anything to go for here, though they might go ahead and farewell. In that case, we're very sad because we say goodbye to absolutely everything we own. But I don't know if there's really any way of playing around that in this particular situation. 
I guess we shouldn't have played out the Simeon Simulacrum, we should have still instead unearthed. If it's a farewell, we concede. We, there's no way of, of us coming back from a farewell, I'm pretty sure. Nope. Opponent doesn't actually have enough answers. When you play all creatures, just sometimes you win. When you play all gas. That's... I do love the Simeon Simulacrums, though. Because they're really good against those non-exile removals. Which you're gonna, you're gonna see a lot of. There is lots of ways to exile your creatures, but Simeon Simulacrum. Very good against those situations where they can't exile. Um, this is looking like a pretty good hand. We would like another land here. We're going to play the Overgrown Farmland and then just play out Tanker Bloom on two. We want to try and hold off playing this until we can get to its, um, its, what are they called? Valor counters. So when it enters the battlefield, you may pay one generic, one white any number of times. When you pay this cost one or more times, put that many Valor counters on the Intrepid Adversary and then creatures you control get plus one, plus one for each Valor counter on Intrepid Adversary. So this is another type of counter that we can proliferate, but it's like a board-wide pump, which is pretty cool. <clears throat> Opponent playing Xander's Lounge, so they're Grixis at the moment. Looking pretty Grixis. Alright, we're gonna swing in before we play anything else. Right, we'll go play the Evolving Adaptive, that way we can grow it potentially next turn. We do need another land here though. Perhaps we should have Mold on two lands. Corpse Appraiser? Oh, that's so gross. That is so gross. Removal turn two, Corpse Appraiser turn three. About as good as it gets. Um... I think we'll play Bloated Contaminated. No, we'll play Simeon Simulacrum just in case they have more removal that they're looking for. Uh, we'll put the plus one counters on Evolving Adaptive so I can actually try and attack in here. So that means they're probably going to remove the Evolving Adaptive next. I would have loved to put the counters on the Simeon Simulacrum, but I'm afraid they won't do that. So they might just Corpse Appraiser again. And then Shieldred's Edict. Yep, there's the Corpse Appraiser. But they won't have enough cards to, uh... Hmm, that's fun. Uh, okay, maybe we play Kadama here, and then just swing in with, uh... I would like the Bloated Contaminator to get going. Yeah, we'll play Bloated Contaminator so we can play Simeon Simulacrum and give the Bloated Contaminator counters next turn. That we should have probably waited until our next turn, or our second main here to play out the Bloated Contaminator, but they probably only have a cut down for the Simeon Simulacrum if they had any removal spell there. One mana leaves them not many options. Well, there is like Annihilating, but I don't think there's an instant speed sack your creature kill target creature there is those one mana removal spells that can do that though where you sack a creature all right we're gonna play kadama next all right swinging with the two that can actually get past the corpse appraiser oh wait they can crew and kill the evolving adaptive but they lose their bank buster Probably should have swung in the Simeon Simulacrum there. Would have uh, would have gotten them down to seven, which would have presented a lethal this next turn. Good game. Okay, I guess we're just gonna keep on winning for the time being. Them. I really didn't expect them just a good game and then surrender. I was expecting like a board wipe. Opponent did not draw into the removal that they're hoping for. Sotaro. 
Sotaro Umazawa is a fun card because you can ninjutsu in like anything. So you can ninjutsu in like a Blightsteel Colossus. Or, which is not a card that's in standard, but if you're playing him in, in Commander, that can be one of the most gross things that you can do. Uh, so <laughs> very terrifying to play against. He's much more balanced and fun in, uh, in standard. Opponent here, they have Vampire logo and everything, or Vampire Avatar. I do wonder what they're up to, but we can play Kadama next turn and potentially ramp a bunch. This gives all our creatures that have modified Trample, and having plus one counters count as Trample as well as uh, like enchantments and, and equipment, but we don't have any enchantments or equipment. We get to find two lands this turn, then watch. Uh, oh yeah, it gives our things trample, and then whenever a modified creature you control deals combat damage, search your library for a basic land card. Which, in this case, we're going to go search out these planes. Uh, because planes work really well with these play champions, because they can spread plus one counters around if we have planes. Which is much preferred to growing a giant clay champion, because giant clay champions uh, just lead to really... Big, um, I should put that on the Korean Beast color. That's fine. Play this. It grows another counter. And we put two plus one counters on it. I think this is fine. They block it and it dies. We just get to spread the plus one counters around, which isn't a big problem. They just take it. Okay, so we just get to search out another land, which in this case we'll grab a forest at this point. We should draw only into creatures at this point, because we've gotten so many lands. Well, that's a bit of a lie. We still have like 24 lands in this deck. So, only having these like 7 plus these two, 9 lands out of our entire deck isn't too crazy. <clears throat> but we do have like 46 cards in our deck, so our deck should be like one fourth lands at this point. Obliterator, that is a decent answer, but we still, if we draw into the right card, you're pretty, pretty gone regardless. Yeah, just proliferate. Commit three. Alright, do we have enough trample damage here? We can go ahead and sacrifice all our lands. They have 11 toughness. We have uh, 13 plus... We have 17 trample. Uh, so I think that's... And then we have the Simeon Simulacrum. I think we're just going to go for it. Let it be what it's going to be. We only sack 6 things if worst comes to worst, so... It's one, two. Oh, they, they're just gone. Yep. No obliterating us. Thankfully, the way trample works is it only does lethal damage. So the maximum things we would have had to sacrifice there was six. So we could have just sacrificed like basically all of our green sources, and then keep the dual lands and most of our planes. Could have, we didn't have to even sacrifice a single creature if we didn't want to. We get really big creatures pretty fast, which is nice. That proliferate came in clutch, though. We wouldn't have had lethal without that proliferate. We perfectly killed them down to zero. Alright, that's not a bad hand. We got four lands to like get us to the clay champion. Got an eye Ganjo that we can cast if we want. Or channel rather, not cast. Ooh, soldiers. Now that soldiers on the play is this is gonna be a real uphill battle. Do you have this eye Ganjo? So if they get like a Sky Strike Officer, we can Igonjo their Sky Strike Officer, which is something we won't ever be able to block. Uh, favorably, I don't think, unless we draw our Kadama, which does have reach. 
Opponent here has a pretty perfect curve so far, though. Re recruitment officer and valiant veteran. I don't think they're going to want to trade. You probably don't want to trade your, your lord that's pumping up all your other creatures. For a 2-2. Two -two. Granted, this 2-2 two -two can grow a bunch. Okay, I'm a little confused here. Um, I mean, I guess this turns into an anthem. But it's not usually the usual uh, play tactic here. Are they getting afraid of our deck? Uh, the moment that you get afraid of our deck, I think, is the moment that we grow bigger creatures than you can ever handle. Alright, we get to make a massive play champ or a 5-5 play champion and spread a bunch of plus one counters around. That is the worst part we could have worst card we could possibly seen. We can still trade off with a seeming simulacrum here, but no, they're not gonna do that. Gross. Um Okay, we could play an Intrepid Adversary, pump our board some. <sighs> I think that's probably our best bet here, right now. Because this makes our Evolving Adaptive into like a 4-4. Four -four. The Evolving Adaptive grows. And then we auto-play this. We got 3-2, 4 4 4-4, 3-2, and a 4-2. Uh, we won't go ahead and attack with anything, I don't think. Man, that Brutal Cathar was about as bad as it got. Bad as it gets. You're not really exactly a soldier's deck, are you? I play out this. And then, yeah. That's fine. And green, green, white, white. Play this, pay zero, confirm zero, six six, that grows bigger, and then we get to put a plus one counter on this card and this card. Alright, not bad, not bad. Though this in the trenches, I don't want to hover it, but they can use it to exile a target non-land current if they get up to six. But we need to put pressure on them soon. Ah yes, the the endless pumps, very annoying. Uh, what do I want to do? This comes in as a five-five. A proliferate card would do us real good right about now. Hmm. Opponent here has managed to anthem up to the moon. Very annoying. No tax. If they draw a Harbin, we just lose, is the problem. But we can't, like, attack in because then we lose everything. Uh. Okay, that is kind of what I was talking about. That is nice. Because what we'll do here is we'll go ahead put a plus encounter on this. Go ahead, proliferate. This makes everything massive. Yep. Ah, I love the double... Pro we proliferated the Valor counter on the Intrepid Adversary, making everything massive, which is cool. We just need Trample. It's like the one thing that we're kind of missing at this point. Because we can swing in with the Bloated Contaminator, and it's going to take out like three of their little human dudes, but it doesn't make too much of a difference. Uh, I mean, if we sing in with everything, what happens? They triple block the blood contaminator, they double block the intrepid adversary. Well, we don't want to swing in with the intrepid adversary then. But we, we can't really swing in with the simian simulacrum or the iron apprentice because they just get blocked by the 6-6. Six, six. Well, if we swing in with both, then they have to lose something. Actually, they don't have to lose something because the simian simulacrum is only a 4-3. We need another valor counter. To pump up the Simian Simulacrum so they can actually trade. Oh, that's so frustrating. I think we don't attack is the, the ultimate answer. 
We do have like a few creatures that like the evolving adaptive clay champion bloated contaminant. Oh, that's not something we wanted to see. Really not something we wanted to see because they can start drawing cards with that. Okay, this isn't bad. We have a series of options with this though. Because we can go ahead and proliferate all our creatures, make them massive. Or we can go ahead and um if we don't proliferate, we can blow up one of their enchantments, which is an option. I do kind of want to just proliferate and then try and swing in. The Shry Strike's a 6-7? What? Uh, I think we blow up the In the Trenches, honestly, and that shrinks down everything they own, which is good. I think, yeah, we got to get rid of the, uh... No, we could get rid of the other wedding announcement, because that one's going to flip soon anyways. I mean, we could wait till their turn and see what they play. Because it's not like they can play two lands. The opponent, though, they have an instant speed interaction with their Sky Strike officer. Hopefully they don't... Try to draw cards with it, because it will make me very, 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 very sad. Hello, opponent? This is... very upsetting. Go ahead and turn. Uh, I'm trying to think what else they could play that would be an enchantment that we would want to remove. We would remove the In the Trenches, which is arguably worse than the Wedding Announcement. I think we'll do that. Or they can get to the lands where they can remove one of our creatures. Would be nice to play for it, because then we get our, like, Blood Contaminator up to, like, an 11-11 and everything. Oh yeah, yeah, One drop, that's a 6-5. Oh yeah. Another Sky Strike Officer. It would be really nice to draw our Kadama here, which would be a 5-5 five, five with a reach. But it wouldn't do much to the Sky Strike Officers now, would it? Point here, though, they get to draw more cards with their Sky Strike Officers, because they now have six soldiers, so they can draw two cards every turn. Thank you, Watsy, for printing some ridiculous cards for soldiers. They actually have seven soldiers, correction. They have the Brutal Cathar, two Sky Strike Officers, two Valiant Veterans, and two Recruitment Officers. The only thing that we could draw that would be, like super good here would be another intrepid adversary i think Bone here pass to attackers before they attack and we'll, or before they land their attack we'll go ahead shrinks down their boards hum but we need a few more of those to really make this at all a fair fight. Wedding announcement is such a gross card. I get like three tokens and an anthem. It's like a three for one to try and remove it any time past the first turn. Siege veteran, now that's something. That is something. Uh, but it doesn't make it, any of our attacks favorable. <laughs> It's actually so obnoxious. I guess we should have gone the aggro early. Like, I don't know. Um, and we can start buffing our Iron Apprentice so we can swing in with that soon. I think that might be our best bet. Because we're never going to be able to connect with this bloated contaminator. So we don't need to worry about going super ham with it. 
the only thing else we could buff is our seeming simulacrum so that we could actually swing in with them, let them die, and then unearth them. Alright, so we have one more turn before we can actually swing in with this Iron Apprentice. Or Iron Apprentice, that way it's a 7-7 and can actually trade with the Sky Strike officers. Go ahead, no attacks here. In the Shrippin' Adversary, we could pump our team all by one again. Our opponent, though, gets to draw, like, two cards here. Two or three cards. Tap, tap, tap. Draw a card. Oh, we're just dead in the air. I am... Alright, well, it's a good way to waste 11 minutes. <laughs> oi, oi, oi. Should have played soldiers. Alright, let's see what we can do in a uh, bit of a fair matchup. Sorry that I spent so long against the soldiers deck that I thought there was a chance of winning and then I completely forgot the soldiers can fly over us. So I didn't even really need to waste the uh, the time. One was a Renin seven or Renin six, or I guess it's just Ren Avatar. But that it does look like a Renin seven. I don't know if there's that much visual difference between the cards, but uh, looks like they might be playing removal here. So playing our career on B's color might be the might not be the smartest idea. We'll hold that off a turn, maybe. Canker Bloom, still a nice card to have out there. Cut down. Show me it. Come on now. Don't tell me you don't have a cut down in your opening hand. No, they're just going to buff their Evolving Sleeper. Or evolved sleeper, not evolving. Planning to just attack in. Well, they can only buff it to a 3-3. They can't get it up any higher, so we'll go ahead and trade. Unless they have something to make it indestructible. Huh. Oh, they just want something to graveyard trespass. Fair enough. Fine by me. I don't mind. Alright, well, now if they still have a removal spell, I'm kind of sad. But they probably don't have a removal spell since they went for the trade rather than anything else. Nope. Graveyard Pres Trespasser has already done quite a bit of damage to us. Five damage. And some of that was not even from attacking. Oh, no. This is a strong start. Um, we can go ahead and attack in with the Korean Beast Caller, but it's going to die, which is not good. Uh, but we do need, we do need this Blood Contaminator able to attack in. Though they're probably just going to swing in with their Archfiend, because they can't, can't really afford to have it thing around blocking. Though they might... Maybe they're playing, like, Burn Down the House with Archfiend? That actually seems like a good combo. Play a bunch of 6-6 six, six, six creatures. <laughs> Play Burn Down the House and a bunch of Sweepers. With Archfiend. Play a little Proliferate here and there. Maybe I could try and make an Archfiend. With a Dross deck that uses the, uh, the second, or, like, the last ability. Me using that. Opponent here, thinking. All right, they're gonna block with the Archfiend, or swing in with the Archfiend rather. Sorry, block with the Graveyard Rest Passer. Believe it or not, opponent, we do not have any way to block that. 
So if they have a removal spell, we lose. Yeah. I think we're about dead. Uh, we need to play a creature that we can block with the... Block the Graveyard Trespasser with. Well, I guess we could swing with the Kanker, or the Creon Beast Caller and see if they want to block. With it. Because if they block with it, we can go ahead and play out the Simian Simulacrum. Otherwise, we need an actual blocker that won't die to the Graveyard Trespasser. We do miss out on some damage here, but... I mean, if they have a removal spell at this point, we're dead. If they don't, we have a chance of winning. Oh, no, we're just dead because of Graveyard Trespasser. Man. Ugh. Yeah, 6-6 six, six is hard to aggro through. Hard to really aggro through. I don't know if this deck is exactly an aggro deck or a mid range deck, but I would say more so aggro than mid, mid range. Right? They're trying to swing in as fast as possible. Don't really like our opponent's name here, Blue Legend. Indicating they're probably playing a lot of counter spells or Mono Blue Tempo or Grixis or Mono Black or something like that. Something somewhat controlling. Instance and sorceries, removal, you name it. Counter spells. Ah, you have a Mind Splicer deck? Azorius. Now, what, what in Azorius is the question? Okay. Play a Simeon Simulacrum because if we get countered, we can unearth it. We can also put the counters on the Iron Apprentice. Our reanimator deck. Okay. Fair enough. We need to kill them before they can even reanimate anything, which is going to be really tough. I think we play out Clay Champion next turn, and then we play out. Intrepid Adversary the following turn? Uh, no, we give up. The answer is we actually just give up. Uh, there's not actually a way to win this one, I don't think. <laughs> Holy shit. That was rough. Do they have another? Because we need to end the game before they get to 5 mana. And I don't think we have a good way of doing that moment. Sweeper? If you have a sweeper, I concede. <clears throat> we had our good matchups, now we have our bad matchups. I mean, you can gain two life with the Faithful Mending, which makes us also very hard. Or makes all of this also very hard. I don't think we can actually win. Okay, they play a singular singular removal spell. Um, I can play this proliferate. As if they don't have a counter spell, they could have a make disappear here. But why would they be running so much counter magic in a reanimator deck? I feel like that's hard to do. Is it a bounce spell? What are you playing, sir? <clears throat> if you don't have a reanimation spell this next turn, you deserve to lose. <laughs> they discarded Invoke Despair. I mean, they're just going to reanimate next turn. It doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. Yep, as soon as we go <laughs> win enough, you get all your bad matchups. That's what it feels like.
That was uh, nothing that we can really do against a turn 5 portal. There, there, there's nothing. I mean, you can kill them before they get to turn 5, but when the opponent temporary lockdowns and uh, removes something else, I mean, yeah. Not much you can do then. Particularly in this deck, I mean, certainly there are other decks you can play or build that actually can handle that sort of interaction, but... We are not playing a uh, super, like, mid-rangey pile. Interesting moves from our opponent here. Uh, I think we'll go play this out, play this out. We get two creature spells, so it's a 4-4, four, four, which is cool. And our evolving adaptive grows. I don't even know if we have to worry about the Slaughter Singer swinging in. Play the Kadama next turn. This will grow our Evolving Adaptive, give it Trample as well as our Beast Caller Trample and get it, make it a 5-5. Trample is going to be kind of important here. Playing Bant Toxic. I hope you have a Protection Spell. You don't, okay. Uh, opponent, I'm not sure this is going to work out. This is one of the nicer Kadama curves. <laughs> I will grab a Plains and a Forest. Yeah. Next turn we can play a Iron Apprentice and a Clay Champion. Ah, Broker's Ascendancy. Interesting. Yeah, I'm sorry sir, this has Reach. Oh, ooh. <laughs> That's that was that was a rough match for our opponent. And yeah, they playing slightly a slower deck. We had a really nice curve there with a solid one drop into a solid two drop into a solid three drop. And then we would have had a really nice turn four. Um with like a double another double spell with a clay champion that pumps up two of our other creatures. Everything has trample thanks to the Kadama. That, that was basically the ideal curve, and the opponent had no interaction, nor more than two creatures, so. This isn't a terrible hand. We can play an Evolving Adaptive into a Kinker Bloom into a Bloated Contaminator. Which will make our Evolving Adaptive a 3-3 three, three over the course of next two turns, and we'll have Bloated Contaminator to help pull our free. Esper, that's spooky. Uh, we'll go ahead and play out this dual end. Well, like an active grows before we swing in. Nice. I mean, we could double cast the volume adaptives here. We want to play around the sweeper potential. Uh, do we want to play around the sweeper? That's the the other question we have to think about here. Maybe we do play around the sweeper and we just keep it as it is and try and kill them over the course of like three turns here. I think we're going to do that. We're going to try something different. I don't normally do this. Kaito. Okay. We can create a chump blocker here, but I don't think that's enough. My turn. Play out another planes. I mean, at this point, we probably should have just full committed to the board, but we still have them in another two turns here. I mean, we could play out the blood contaminator to kill them this next turn. That would have been a smart thing to do, I guess. Build a ruin. That's not another white source for it to depopulate. They could have drag under. Soren. Okay, we so got planeswalkers here. That's an indication that they do definitely have sweepers though, which is bad for us. Do 
bad for business. Alright, so in that case, we'll go ahead, play out this, pump up this so we can actually swing through. Most afraid of the Soarin', I'm not going to lie. Yeah, not too upset with Kankerblin going. Without me, we're all mm -mm. I mean, it's a draw a card. She, I played a Suzuki. Suzuki. All right, that's another white source for the farewell that's coming up next turn. Uh, in that case, opponent, you have a removal spell for evolving adaptive. Um, yeah, we'll just do this. Fernal Grasp, okay. I mean, I guess we could have swung all face and put them down to four here, but... I know you have a sweeper. Show me the farewell, filthy, filthy player. Thanks. I'll be taking that now. We could have definitely killed them here if we played more act. I'm so confused, man. Alright, we'll play Beast Caller into like an Apprentice and an Evolving Adaptive. Or an Evolving Adaptive into a Beast Caller. Into an Iron Apprentice, we'll do that. This keeps up at least an Evolving Adaptive and Blood Contaminator. Uh, we might have just goofed super hard since they're probably going to go for the sweep of this next turn. Wander. Okay. So maybe they don't have a sweeper. But I feel like if they had a sweeper, they would... I don't know. I don't know what I'm doing, alright? I, I should have just full committed to the board and try to murder them. <laughs> Instead of like, letting them just dirtle here for a while before farewelling. Hold up the Thirsting Race here, it's not like we're going to be able to... Uh, if we draw either a Intrepid Adversary or something like that, it doesn't really make too much of a difference. I wonder if our opponent really held off that farewell that long. Fuck it, don't play around the sweeper, just go whole hog, it doesn't fucking matter. It doesn't actually fucking matter, because if they have one sweeper, they always have another. Lesson learned, try something different, never try something different either. Do the same thing every single day. <laughs> I'm joking. Uh, but still, I, I can't stand those sorts of matchups. Because they just win... I don't know if we really would have been able to kill them there. They could have held off playing the farewell for as long as they wanted until we full committed to the board. Because they had enough spot removal. Lustiger Bob. I feel like we've played against this person before. I feel like we've played against someone named Lustiger Bob. Lustiger Bob. Bonk. Yo, I like that. I do like that. Gruel aggro. Very cool. No attack. I play out this. Give me a simulacrum. Ooh. No one takes it. Wasn't expecting that. Go full. 
full white on this. Did not expect that, no. Are we dead? No. And then we can just kill them this next turn. GG. GG. Bro. I don't think we have lethal as it stands, so we're just gonna go pay zero. Yeah, actually we would have had perfect lethal without that, I'm pretty sure. Because we put like a t t total... No, we put actually... Yeah, we needed to cast at least a spell, I think. Okay. Alright, well, that's what this deck wants to do. Let's go ahead and hop into the deck tech. We've definitely shown what it's up for. Okay, I double clicked on something and it did fun things. Alright. So yeah, we have a series of one drops here with counters that we like to play. We got the Iron Apprentice. This is nice because we can put a bunch of loaded up on plus one counters and we don't really mind too much because if it dies, plus one counters end up on another creature we control. Very similar to Crayon Beast Caller. When it dies, you can distribute its plus one counters across X uh, creatures. Now, Evolving Adaptive is our other one drop here that also has counters on it. Um, this enters with oil counters and then it grows, uh, adds more oil counters if something has greater power and toughness, enters the battlefield, uh, which is very cool. Um, but we can also put plus one counters on it, which gives us like two things to proliferate with it, which is really cool. Um, and then another one drop we have here is Thirsting Roots. This can help us search up basics in a real pinch. But if we're really playing this for a super cheap and decent like draw in terms of like the proliferate, because well, this has a counters on it, this has 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 counters, this counters, and then this also has counters. So we have a ton of way things to proliferate, um, which makes proliferate effects really powerful in this deck, um, and that's why even just playing thirsting roots isn't that bad. Uh, in terms of our two drops here, we have intrepid adversary. When it enters the battlefield, we may pay one generic and one white, and then every time we do that, we get to put a Valor counter on Intrepid Adversary, and then creatures we control get plus one, plus one for each Valor counter we have on Intrepid Adversary. This is like Field Anthem that we can also proliferate, which is really cool. Um, we got to see it against that Soldier stack there. Unfortunately, our opponent had just like five more Anthems than we did, uh, so <laughs> didn't really matter. Um, but super cool effect on this, a 3-1 life linker, which is a really nice power to buff up the involving adaptive. Uh, so we can buff up the evolving adaptive to three. And then it's also like life linker, which is very nice into uh, the opponent's boards that are also very aggro. We have Canker Bloom here, which can be useful uh, in terms of picking off artifacts and enchantments. And then also again, proliferate really strong in here. So Sometimes we'll just play the Canker Bloom and then sack it to proliferate to help us get our creatures that are already able to attack in even uh, bigger because, well, we want to kill the opponent as fast as possible. Um, and then, yeah, again, in a pinch, we can destroy our artifact enchantment. We use this against the Soldier's deck to try and blow up one of their, their uh, anthems that pumped all their creatures, but not enough. Um, and then... Um, I would say though, if you have more Intrepid Adversary, you might want to swap out like a Canker Bloom here for Intrepid Adversary, but I only have two Intrepid Adversary, so. And then this is also like a set that's going to rotate out at the end of this year, uh, so I'd be cautious investing too much into these like older sets uh, at the moment. And then we have Creon Beast Caller. This card is a powerhouse in any sort of aggro creature decks. Because whenever you cast a creature, it gets bigger. It's nice that it's a cast trigger, so you don't even need the creature to enter the battlefield, unlike Evolving Adaptive, which says whenever another creature enters the battlefield under control, if that creature has greater power and toughness, this requires a creature to spell to actually resolve for you to the for you to get the pump, whereas this just says whenever you cast a creature. So that can help in more countery matchups. Um, and then it's nice because you can load this thing up on plus one counters, and when it dies, you can distribute X plus one counters among any number of target creatures you control, where X is the number of plus one counters Korean uh, Beast Caller has. Uh, so yeah, 
very nice because again similar to the iron apprentice we can spread out the plus one counters and it picks up plus one counters like crazy and we're playing basically only creatures besides thirsting roots and then we have siege veteran this is uh sort of our like extra this is our kind of worse off ascendant or what is that aspirin or wait what was the name of the card it's no longer in standard so i can't actually search it up here uh, but if I go back to my collection, I could. Uh, but I think it was Luminarch Ascendant or Luminarch Asp... No, Aspirin? No, I don't know. I can't remember. Uh, but it was a creature that was two mana, and at the beginning of your combat, you put a plus one counter on target creature you control. This is a very nice effect to have, because we want to put plus one counters on our bloated contaminator to give it like an even bigger body to trample over with. And because every time it tramples over, we get to proliferate, which means we get to grow the bloated contaminator as well as our other creatures. So this is a nice card that can help us put counters and bloated contaminator and everything else. Because if we're able to actually proliferate our board, we want as many counters on everything or like a counter on everything that we can get because that uh, increases the power we get out of each of our proliferates. So this is really nice because it can spread the counters around and then we don't have any other soldiers, so the second clause here doesn't really matter, but maybe our opponents are afraid of soldiers and they'll insta-concede, I don't know. Um, Simian Simulacrum, this card is an absolute powerhouse. I recommend if you have green in your deck and your aggro deck, put this card in. Um, it is amazing entering the battlefield, putting two plus one counters on target creature you control. You can really strategize with this. Uh, if you have a trampling creature and you want to try and get the damage through, you can put it on that. Or if you uh, have like a really big creature and you want to try and spread out the power to other creatures, uh, then you can do that. If you have a creature with a death trigger that the opponent uh, is like avoiding killing, well, you put the counters on that so the opponent is inclined to remove it and then you get value out of it. So like we can put these counters on Iron Apprentice, we can put it on three on Beast Caller, we can put them on Bloated Contaminator because if it tramples through, we get to proliferate. It's all uh, very nice. And then, in worst comes to worst, we can put it on the Simian Simulacrum. And then the Unearth effect is super nice because when the opponent uh, does get a lot of removal, or like they have Planeswalkers out, they sweep through your board, well, guess what? Your Unearth effect gives you a creature with haste from your graveyard. Um, and then you can put the counters on Simian Simulacrum, hasting in with a 4 3 to kill off their Planeswalkers that they work so hard to protect. Uh, so that's very satisfying. Um, and then this is a really good chump blocker. You put the plus one counters on something else, you chump block with it, you return it from your graveyard, and you pump up your stuff even more and swing in with this creature that they're not going to be inclined to block because it's going to sacrifice itself at the end of uh, that that end step. Or it doesn't sacrifice it, it exiles, but you get the point. Um, and then Blood Contaminator, talked about it a bunch. Technically has Toxic 1, I haven't mentioned that yet, but um, Trample 4 4, really nice body gets you out of those shock ranges where the things that do three damage gets you out of cut down range because it's a four four not a two two um, which is very nice kadama another thing a uh, great creature to have in this deck well because a lot of our creatures are going to end up with counters on them of some sort and this gives them trample and then help us ramp whenever we do connect with a creature with plus one plus one counters um because we can search out basic lands and we have enough basic lands where it's worth it clay champion another absolute powerhouse in this deck do really like paying white mana for this in like a mono green deck this clay champion is just like a really big creature because you you pay four green into it and it comes into the battle as a four mana eight eight which is crazy right um but in a slesnia type deck you can pay two green and then pay two white and it comes into the battlefield as a four mana five five and buffs up two of your other creatures with like a plus one counter but if you just pump a bunch of white into it you still get value out of it if you end up pumping a bunch of green into it you still get value out of it and we have three different like dual lands here which is very nice it's so that we can kind of uh strategize so that we're not we're not ending up paying three green and one white which then we lose out on like value um and there's almost no point in playing it in the, or playing it that way um but yeah and then in terms of land base, we got the Razor Ridge Thicket, which if you have the wild cards to craft these types of, uh, if you have the wild cards to craft rare lands, I would kind of recommend doing them um, in 
particularly the newer sets like don't don't cra craft yourself overgrown farm lands if they're going to be rotating out at the end of this year it's probably not worth it but these brush lands these razor verge, razor verge thickets these will be in standard after the rotation uh, so they're definitely decent lands to pick up if you don't have them same with the Baseju, these are going to rotate out unfortunately uh, but these are nice lands that we can use in a pinch well that is slesney counters i hope you guys enjoyed the deck um let me know what you guys thought about it and if you enjoyed the video consider liking and le uh liking leaving a comment subscribing uh and have a nice day morning evening night whenever and wherever you're watching ciao